Shoulder. <laughs> that resistance. Get off my hand! Oh my love! Wolf Tick Nation, thank you guys for tuning in to once again another Wolf Tick Videos episode. Guys, on today's episode, we bring you to beautiful Hot Springs, home of the Cats Meow and Ragnarok, some of our favorite trails here. We're going to be doing everybody's favorite trail today. Yes, that's right, the Cats Meow, and we're going to be doing it on uh, the o Ozark Trail vibe. <laughs> yeah. I brought my lantern. We were camping last night, so we brought the vibe along, okay? In case they missed the uh, the opener, do you want to tell them what's new for 2023? Yeah. So what's new for 2023 is we're actually tuning these bikes in. A little well, bit. Yeah, somewhat. Okay, what, what the best that we can. Um, well... In, in five minutes. We're not professional. Just to give these bikes a fair chance out there on the real-time review, so when we will actually get to see if the derailers and shifters are worth a crap. All right? And, and I don't have a lot of hope for this shifter and derailler, unfortunately. No, well, we're going to give it a fair shake. Yeah. All right? Let's hit these trails. <laughs> Ozark Trail vibe, baby. Everybody's favorite test track. Now the shifter is going to be very difficult because, like I said, we try to get it tuned in. It is just very sketch. Um, hopefully we don't have any problems on this ride, but eight speed, I believe it's a 40 tooth. Okay, we're getting some rubbing already. We're getting some rubbing back there. It does not sound good. I think we have to go in seventh gear. Remember, whenever you tune a bike and it's completely different on a bike stand and whenever you ride it, it seems like, if it's a crappy group set. And this here is definitely not the best of the best. Something that is interesting though, I mean that fork is just bouncing all over the place. So the stiffest of preloads not working all that great. But I thought that this bike was gonna feel a little small for me. <laughs> and by small, I don't mean, you know, cause it was a 19, inch frame i believe which is like a large but i thought the cockpit was going to feel really small this is almost perfect but it does feel like i'm way off the ground it almost feels like i'm riding a 29er this is a 27.5 let's look at this group set real quick if i can't get to eighth gear or first gear i'm sorry if i can't get to first gear it's gonna suck when i'm climbing and the thing about it is this uh kazuno shifter excuse me the thing about it is this kazuno shifter and there's no barrel adjuster on here there is one for the brake because that's one component but there's not one or there is one for the rear so let's tighten it up real quick and maybe that'll help now let's see what we can do okay so i i got first gear out of the way second third all right, now we're moving. The uh, shifter is a little bit difficult to deal with. There is a display window, but I've kind of just said, well, screw looking at that because it's very much, it's just guessing work, really. You've got so much throw here on the thumb and you've got so much throw on the on your trigger finger. It's kind of ridiculous. <laughs> so that's kind of a hard thing to deal with there. Um, and that has nothing to do with tuning in. It's just, you know, you gotta press it way hard in order for a damn thing to shift. But we'll get the feel for it. And that front fork now actually feels like it's doing decent. This bike is definitely pretty heavy up front. I can feel that when I was climbing back there. But the uh, fork on this flat stuff's not bad. 
a lot of the commenters were saying, a lot of the viewers, see right there, it didn't shift, it just went into it. A lot of the uh, viewers were saying, that's like the perfect dad bike or family bike to take out or get a kind of a kid started, you know. And I think they're right, like flat stuff like this wouldn't be an issue at all or um, like around the campground. It's perfect for that, I would think. A little difficult to get tuned in, but there's not a whole lot of shifting going on on the road or in an RV park. Yeah, definitely not gonna have any whiskey throttle today with the temperature. It's not hot whatsoever. Sun shining though. At least we're not getting rained on. Been having nothing but rain the last few weeks whenever we try to get a real-time review in. And we'll see how these brakes do. Disc brakes, I think a 160 and a 140. Um, the levers are kind of far out from my hands. We didn't adjust those, but there is actually a reach adjustment on them to get a little bit closer. You know, a lot of people were also saying, what the heck were they thinking with this bike? Ozark Trail wanted to get into the game. And, you know, you have a tapered head tube. You have kind of internal routing um, under $300, right? But you got an eight speed, that's pretty bad. You got a coil fork. Like they've done some right things with the tapered head tube and uh, the price, I would say. And then that's kind of it. You know what I'm saying? Just kind of weird. Like they just, hey, we have all this stuff left over. Let's put it on a bike. Uh, but we'll see how the real-time review goes. Going down to Cat's Meow. We'll see how balanced this bike is. But right now, I can honestly say, guys, it's not bad for this. It's really not. I'm kind of enjoying this ride. Just, it's perfectly sized for me. I'm 5'5". Five five. It does feel like I'm on a 29er. So it kind of feels like I'm up in the air a little bit, kind of upright, but it's really comfortable in the climbing department. Could use some more, a uh, little more tooth count on the rear cogs back there. Remember this is a free wheel, not a free hub. Eight speed. Could use some more gearing, uh, but I mean, it's not terrible. It's, it's decently comfortable. Man, if we have a lockout on that fork, that would be a big plus. When we're talking about it being interesting, us uh, getting a, a small as opposed to a medium. But this thing's reach isn't bad at all for me. It kind of feels like the cockpit's just the right size. Man, that front fork, that sun tour, it's hurting. It's just bouncing all over the place. And we got the stiffest of preload on it right now. Now, something I'm also a fan of on a bike this simple, most of the time when you pay the price that we paid for something, well, for a bike like this, you can expect usually a front derailleur and that they went ahead and given you just a single derailleur, which is it's pretty bad, but you don't have all the extras to worry about and just weigh this bike down. But well, something that would have been cooler as opposed to that micro shift 26 is if they'd given you like a nine speed where the Axum has like an ax, I think it's called or even the Ardor, I think, come with a nine speed, was it? And those both had clutch derailleurs, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong. I know MTB Alex is watching. But to keep it simplified up here on the front is nice. You don't have a bunch of stuff to worry about, um, but that derailleur is just hurting back there. Um, and actually, this might be a first. I don't know if it's my new, uh, my new riding shoes here. You guys can check those out in the affiliate links. But the pedals aren't bad at all. Like, my shoes are actually gripping on them. So that's kind of a nice change up. All right, guys. It looks like we are at the world famous, everybody's favorite test track, the cat's meow. Let's get some more. Let's call Wolfman and let's see what kind of damage we can do on the Ozark Trail vibe. I just want to let you know I'm up at the cat's meow on the Ozark Trail. Okay, well, you made it up there. Now, hopefully, you make it down. Yeah, I'm hoping I'll make it down. You know, funny, the ride up wasn't bad. Um, I was talking a lot of crap about the shifter and the derailleur, but it actually did decent with tension on it. Well, that, that's good to hear. Maybe the whole extra tuning helped. Yep, I think it did. So I'm going to, uh, I got some water going in me. I'm going to do a once over on the bike, and then uh, we're going to hit the cat's meow. Wish me luck. Love you. Good luck. All right, guys, let's do this. All right, fork cam is on. We've got the preload set to the tightest. Um, I believe that's the tightest. Yeah, we got set to the tightest. Let's give a little pump test here. 
it's a little difficult there. We've actually used a lot of these stanchions and we've got to preload at the um, the stiffest all the way up here. I mean, we've used about a little bit more than half, so I'm sure we're gonna bomb these puppies out right now. Brakes are all good. I kinda did a little once over. Seat post is dropped. All right, standing room only. <laughs> this bike's a little chattery, but let's get after it, guys. We've got the Ozark Trail vibe on the cat's meow. Please hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button, show you boys some love. Okay, we are in eighth gear. It was a dude I just got in talking to a little while ago, where if we can catch him. Okay, the rowing is very suspect because the front and the back of the bike are super heavy, <laughs> but we're gaining some speed. Again, it's a very, oh, very awkward with how high up I am. It feels like I'm on a damn skyscraper, 20th story. All right, not a bad jumper. That front is hurting though. I can already tell. So we can clear this. Okay, we can clear it. It's heavy enough I can throw my whole body into it. Okay, first tabletop. Oh, very front top heavy. Second, God! Almost slipped off the back. Holy crap. <laughs> oh man, let's look at these stanchions. Okay, so we bombed it out totally. I mean, that's all we can get out of those puppies. The Suntour XCM 30s, that's it, okay? The good news is the stem is still there. No whiskey throttle. The bars look like they're still uh, in the original shape. We didn't bend them whatsoever. The derailleur, everything stayed... Okay, so we went from eighth gear to sixth. That's not good, but... Um, all in all, it held up on that. I am shocked. Okay, let's keep on going down the cat's meow. All right, we'll get to test the brakes out down here. We got the famous spot between the trees and we've got our tire test area, guys. Oh, this fork's hurting. We're gonna bomb it out once again. Urgh, not looking forward to this. Oh, way too far forward. Oh, all right, little drops here. And that group set's like, please. Put the chain stay protector on me. Ugh. All right, tire test area. The 2.3s, how they're gonna handle. Very sketch. <laughs> oh man, the brake, it kind of braked for me. I don't know if something went out, of, went out of tune or what. Very chattery in the rear now. But the tire, oh, dude. Kind of didn't have any brakes right there. The tires lost a little bit of grip, but not as much as I thought. We didn't get a flat, that is super good. Dude, she freaking made it. Wow, okay, the front feels very, very loose now. We'll have to check the uh, threaded axles. Oh, what in the world? Okay, let's see. All right, so the tire's tight. Something is loose up here, I can feel it. It might just be the stanchions. I'm smelling oil, like, bad. I wonder if all the grease or something kind of shot is shot in these things now. Something does not feel right up front. Yeah, it feels super loose. You guys hear that? And that's not the rotor. That's either the headset or the stanchion. Something's going on right there. But I can smell that grease coming from them. Dude, the group set held up big time. And I did move my camera, so it's not like I'm just missing the camera flew off or something. It's over here. Very cool. The pedals weren't bad at all. That is so weird. Can it be the RC shoes? Not sure, but guys, let's uh, let's ride back up. We might show you a little bit of footage going back down to uh, Wolfman, and we'll we'll, uh, we'll talk about the vibe. All right, we're gonna start climbing out of the Cat's Meow. Um, the bike feels super duper loose now. That's one thing. Oh man, I mean, it feels full sketch. I'm glad we're over the Cat's Meow. Tires didn't do bad. Um, you know what's weird is it doesn't feel terrible, like especially the group set right now. I mean, I'm warmed up and everything now, but we try to tune this thing in, something new we're gonna start doing. And I was like, Dad, this thing ain't gonna, it ain't gonna fly. But actually, surprisingly, it's doing okay under pressure. The big downfall is you just have to find the gears with the shifter, you know, you kind of have to, you're stuck searching for them. But if you can get used to it, 
we can change out the group set. You know what I mean? If we were to um, get a new brake and a new uh, shifter because these two are the same. You know, it's just one component, but not terrible. Oh yeah, super loose. <laughs> I don't know. Let us know. Let us know in the comments, guys. Who do you think this bike is for? All right, guys. Well, that was the real-time review of the Ozark Trail vibe. That's going to take me a second getting used to saying Ozark Trail when I'm talking about a bike. But anyway, uh, we man, are camping. Oh, yeah, I mean we're camping. Uh, you guys got to see it. Wolfman uh, wanted to tell you it, it really wasn't bad. It's just the shifter started acting up, with the derailleur started acting up. It was just very awkward. But once I got that in tune and kind of figured out where I needed to be in order to shift. It wasn't terrible under under pressure. So being on the bike stand, you know, we did a little bit of tuning, all new for 2023. It actually, I think that made a big difference with uh, getting this group set, kind of a real-time review on it. Now, once uh, once we started getting up to a sidecar and climbing up towards the cat's meow, getting a little bit more climbing in there, the fork kind of fell flat on its face because the preload knobs really don't work. And I think everybody knew that, you know, just because this fork is a Suntour uh, XCM30, it's got a name brand behind it, doesn't mean it's, it's one of the best just because there's a a sticker with an SR Suntour name on it. You know what I mean? Definitely um, could do a lot better in the fork. Um, well, for the price point, the fork's not the worst. And it's under what, three hundred dollars? It's yeah, two ninety eight. We had bikes with worse forks for two ninety eight. You know, this is an under three hundred dollar bike, and I think for what we put it through today, it survived. We didn't get any flats, and I. I I don't know. I think it's kind of what I expected. I think it's kind of what everybody expected, you know? It kind of surprised me maybe a little bit as far as just not falling apart. The thing we have to figure out now is it's a little loose in the front end. I don't know if it's the headset or if it's that fork, but we definitely used all of the travel and everything else up on the, on the stanchions today. I was happy that the two-bolt stem actually stayed put and the bars didn't bend at yeah. all. So that was really a plus. Um, the I don't know if a small would be what we would need. You know what I mean? The medium was really nice because it kind of felt like the cockpit was right at that point of almost being a little too small. And I'm 5'5". Five five. The only weird thing with this bike, it being a 19-inch frame and kind of, I don't know, not built long but kind of built up, it did feel like I was telling the viewers like I was on a skyscraper, like on the 20th floor. It has that feel. Look, I, I, the cockpit's it, small. It was, yeah, it was comfortable to climb with, but it wasn't like Schwinn aluminum comp small. It was just almost, almost too small you know what i mean a couple of times i could have sworn i was riding a 29er you know but i think this bike all in all is like a lot of viewers said man they said hey this thing is probably a dad's camp style bike or a um, you know medium size kids bike just to kind of get started on because for, big kid huh that'd be a big kid well you know because like, tall because man i mean how are they gonna get on it yeah, I mean, that that's true. It, it has really bad standover. So, I mean, maybe just a good dad bike for, for little green trails and things like going up to the cat's mail, you know. It really wasn't, it wasn't terrible. Small dad, big kid. Small dad, yeah, big kid. That's exactly who this bike is for. I mean, not a not a, not a terrible ride. And we got to think, it's under 300 bucks. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't have anything special to it. It has the weird internally routed frame that's, I mean, just a, like a tad bit internally routed. It's got the coil fork. It has a tapered head tube, but it's got a crappy one by setup i don't know it's just it, it's just strange you know yeah. what i'm saying uh, luckily i didn't get a flat because i just remembered i didn't bring any kind of um open end wrenches or anything to change out the flat so i'd have been screwed <laughs> anyway but all right guys well uh we're gonna be getting out of here we appreciate you guys watching wolf dick videos as always we'll see you guys on the next one please hit the like button hit that subscribe button if you guys want to check out some of the stuff i rode with today or some of the stuff we use please take a look in the affiliate links in the description below